are at Barnsdale Gardens and this was the home of the great Jeff Hamilton who was there on Gardeners World Live and now Nick Hamilton, uh, his son has taken it on and you do see uh, a sculpture of Jeff by his other son Chris in the garden. We're looking at design principles so we're going to be looking at each of the gardens to see what the different elements are in the composition and which design principles that have been used in the creation of it. See what we can work out. Examine the garden and see if you can work out the different elements that make up the composition and also see if you can see what the design principles are which link the garden together and make it work. So breaking down the coastal garden you can see the elements in this one we've got that little sort of beach hut that's there We've got the sort of decking, we've got the swag rope, we've got these beautiful gabions full of Caledonian cobbles which you'd expect to see by the sea and obviously gravel and looking at some of the plants we've got formiums, we've got the remains of some agapanthus and as we look around you can see there's yuccas which you know typically we see at the sea. There's a lovely Aliagnus again very typical of the seaside and a pine. And it's got a nice flow, it kind of keeps in scale by stepping down using the steps and it kind of links together with that bit of decking, bringing it round, round the sort of fire pit uh, to the front. So that's a little bit of rhythm. Examine the garden and see if you can work out the different elements that make up the composition and also see if you can see what the design principles are which link the garden together and make it work. So let's break this garden down a little bit. You can see it's a herb garden and you can see those lovely old drainage tiles there just down to the right make a great little container for herbs and you can see you've got oregano, you've got lemon balm and thyme and different things uh, growing in them. So that's part of the cohesion, part of the unity in this garden. Uh, plus, of course, you've got the plants themselves, so you've got uh, there to the left, Halichrysum metallicum, you've got rosemary, and uh, over to the right you've got lavender, and, uh, you know, uh, hyssop at the frontier. Lots of uh, interesting plants which tie it together, plus, um, you know, a, a sort of a, quite an old wall uh, there on the right, and this beautiful little bit of trellising with the finials and the, the, the sort of half lap crisscross in it and two nice seats at the back. So overall it's got the, you know, a lot of elements which make up that composition to give you the unity and even the bay at the back, that lovely Loris nobilis there and the Artemisia to the left give you a lot of uh, cohesion. In this garden, this country garden, it's a good example of asymmetrical balance. If you look at the way we've got the two box ball uh, standards there and you've got a Lanistra hedge but again they're not uh, symmetrical. The, the way the path moves through here to it creates a, a you know a sort of a feeling of space and it breaks up a garden really nicely taking you through. This would be great on a long thin plot as well and it takes you through to that nice woodland area nice transition with the with the birch. The birch are really good plants from transitioning from a modern garden to a more woodland area because they work well in both situations. You can see there's a nice uh, Euonymus salatus uh, on the back left there, a nice Mahonia with its good texture and then into the uh, looking at the fence you've got some lovely sort of uh, fan or espalier apples. Another great example of asymmetrical balance in the garden and you've got this uh, curved shape in every sense of the word uh, repeating through the garden uh, but it's great to have it asymmetrical rather than straight symmetrical makes it more interesting and then the the sort of that you've got some lovely sort of shapes and forms again in terms of shape we've got circles of the box balls and the triangles and in terms of form you've got the globose again against the more conical forms and then you've got this lovely bit of lavender around the outside which kind of ties it all together. 
Examine the garden and see if you can work out the different elements that make up the composition and also see if you can see what the design principles are which link the garden together and make it work. This is a, a fantastic garden. This is the Japanese garden and you can see here you've got all the elements, the Phyllostachys nigra, you've got Phyllostachys uh, aurea, uh, or it could be Oreo, Oreocolis, whichever one it is. You've got the curved bridge, you've got the sort of monolithy type stones representing different islands or animals. You've got the rake gravel, you've got the bamboo all nice and neatly tied. You've got that lovely cherry tree, uh, which is like Shurifugan, which comes out and arches over. You've got a nice sort of meandering path and water. And you've got some fantastic plants in this, which unite it together. We've got the lovely uh, Cornus alternifolia variegata. You can see they're using some weights there just to get that trained to give that beautiful shape to it. Um, we've got the lovely Fatsia japonica there. Um, so we've got lovely aces um, and hostas and epimediums and there's a Chinese lantern. So lots of elements here that will tie this garden together. Even a Shishio Doshi I can see in the background there. Um, so really good. The one thing I don't like about this garden is the pagoda. I just wish that they had a different roof on that and it curved a little bit, uh, a, a little bit more authentic, but uh, as everything, it's down to budget, etc. So we've got some good examples of form. Uh, so form is the three dimensions of a plant and you can see there, it's quite clear, you've got that sort of pyramidal or almost conical kind of form there on the Pisces. You've got the globose form on the heathers and then you've got kind of the prostrate form on things like the thyme at the front. The thing with this garden, this little bit of garden of course, is scale is difficult because you've got that great cryptomeria and the cedar, sorry, the picea behind it. So you've got the picea behind it and of course the, you can end up out to scale one thing to another. In this garden we've got this sort of town paradise garden really and you can see that you've got the pagoda on the far side but it's quite clever how the scale has come down using these uh, viburnum looks like Annabelle and uh, you've got some sort of uh, peltiphylum in the background which kind of links it and stops it being too big so that's a good way of reducing scale in a garden.